Hello everyone. Hope you are all doing great today. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Science Galaxy. Today I wanted to talk to you all about several frameworks and processes governing data science and machine learning projects. I am Manjunath. While there are multiple frameworks available, I want to talk about an important data mining process model called CRISP-DM model and also talk about Agile data science in this video. So let's get started. Before I talk about the CRISP-DM framework or the model, let us pause here and ask a pertinent question. And that is to ask, what is the need for a framework or a process? Think about it. Let us say, in the absence of a defined process, each time one tends to come up with a new process that need not be consistent and it is highly undesirable. Now, let me talk about CRISP-DM model or the framework in greater detail. CRISP-DM stands for Cross Industry Standard for Data Mining. This is a matured process emphasizing on the structured and systematic approach to governing any data science project. This framework serves as more of a guidance or if you will, a blueprint which enables you to approach systematically any data science project. Another thing is to say this framework is industry, application and tool agnostic. It is also non-proprietary in nature. The focus of this framework is on business issues, technical analysis and the practical problems themselves. It serves as a repository or templates and case studies for guidance and analysis. It consists of six phases. In the next slide, let us understand each of those phases in greater detail. This graphic actually depicts the various phases involved in the CRISP-DM model. The various phases in CRISP-DM model are business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation and deployment. Now let us spend time to understand every phase involved in CRISP-DM framework. It's very very important to understand each and every phase involved in greater detail. First phase is called business understanding. Realize business understanding is very vital and critical to any data science project, particularly any data science project success. Primarily, business understanding phase can be looked at from three dimensions. First dimension, statement of business objective. Second dimension, statement of data mining objective. Third dimension, statement of success criteria. Mouthful, isn't it? Let us take an example to understand each of those dimensions in greater detail. Statement of business objective could be a client would want to improve the overall profits for the organization. Then what is the statement of data mining objective? You take that functional problem or the business problem which is defined as a function of the domain and as a function of a client's vision, translate that business or functional problem into a data mining or analytical or machine learning problem or objectives in quantifiable terms for you to eventually measure those machine learning objectives. An example of machine learning objective could be increase in the overall profits by 10 percentage on let us say the current baseline of 10 million dollars per annum. Let us now understand the success criteria. Success criteria is all about taking the model based solution, translating them into business insights and converting the business insights into business impact for the client to realize the intended outcomes in, the, in terms of the objectives and that is to say in this example 10% increase on the overall profits on a current baseline of 10 million dollars per annum. Further as part of business understanding phase we will be looking at understanding the requirements in greater detail. We will also be looking at the inventory of resources. We shall be understanding several assumptions, constraints, challenges and also look at risks and the contingencies. We would also make an analysis of cost and benefit for the client. All these inputs would lead us to create what is called a project plan which is governing the entire data science project life cycle. Now let us look at understanding the second phase called data understanding phase. In this phase basically initially we will do the data collection and get the familiarity with the data itself and we will primarily identify the data quality issues. We will also describe the data and explore the data to identify 
and verify the quality and identify several outliers or anomalies in the data. As part of the data understanding phase, we will be coming up with certain reports. It could be the data collection report, it could be data description report and it could be data quality report etc. The emphasis in the data understanding phase is also about verifying the quality of data. We will be asking some important questions like is the data really from the domain under consideration? Are there any errors in the data and the ways and means of data collection? Are there any redundant or repetitive information in the data etc. Now let us look at and understand the third phase called the data preparation phase. Arguably this is the most intensive phase. I say this because it could take up depending on the size of the project many a times 75 percent 80 85 percent of the time for the entire project where as part of this phase we are looking at predominantly selection of the data cleaning of the data transforming of the data as part of selecting the data we would look at various rationale for inclusion or exclusion one of the examples is if it is isn't really from your domain so you may want to consider removing that data then cleaning the data, removing repetitions and redundancies, then you, you would be removing headers and footers wherever appropriate. As part of transforming the data, you would be converting data into several bins, converting data into various other data types and formats and also if it is unstructured data, you would be looking at reducing the data to word frequency list or keyword frequencies which can be features in the data mining project. As part of data preparation, we will also look at integrating the data by merging the data with the several other sources of the data by formatting and reformatting the data. Essentially, the focus is creating and transforming the data for consumption for analysis in the subsequent phases. Next phase is the modeling phase, which is an important engineering aspect of the life cycle of the data science projects. In this phase, we will be selecting and applying several of the machine learning techniques. These techniques include both supervised and unsupervised learning techniques. We will also be closely looking at validating the assumptions of those machine learning techniques themselves as part of evaluation in the next phase. We shall also be looking at generation of the test cases through the test design strategy so that eventually in the next phase, we will be able to validate the model. We will also be going about building the models, applying several of those machine learning techniques on the data and then looking for strategies as to how do we fine tune the model. We call that in the machine learning parlance, hyper tuning of the model or hyper tuning parameters. The next phase is an all important phase called evaluation phase. This is critical stage of the project where we will be rigorously assessing the data mining results to gain confidence and to ensure that the model based solution is reliable for us to go about making recommendations for the client. Also important to note is at the stage of evaluation, we will want to ensure that the model satisfies the original business goals. As part of evaluating the results, we will be going about assessment of the data, looking at the data mining results as part of our success criteria. In doing the evaluation, we will also from time to time review the process and see any adjustments, readjustments or realignments necessary. If any test cases are not coming out to be satisfactory, that is to say the outputs are deviating from the expected outputs, we will go about initiating some kind of remedial action. It is in fact an iterative process which will enable us to meet the business objectives as part of our success criteria with confidence. Evaluating the data science projects or evaluating the results of a data mining model also includes both quantitative and qualitative assessments. In fact, evaluation is such a critical stage in the entire data science project lifecycle because several stakeholders involved in the project have to provide a formal sign off before the model gets deployed into the production environment as part of the deployment phase. That is the next phase which we are going to shortly talk about. The last phase of the CRISPDM framework is an all important deployment phase. In a way, deployment phase is the culmination of all your data science project efforts. This is where the model based solution and the models actually gets deployed in the production environment of the client. 
In fact, this is where the models are put into real use in order for the stakeholders to realize some return on investment. So while the models are in production, we will be, do, we will be doing certain things. What are those? They are, we are constantly and periodically monitoring and maintaining the models in production. What does it mean? So it means periodically refreshing and recalibrating the models while it is in production as part of our maintenance contract with the clients. And from time to time, we will be reviewing the process, we will be reviewing the models to see if there is any deviation from the anticipated outputs and then take remedial actions as needed. Now let us switch gears and look at Agile Data Science closely in this slide. The primary focus of any Agile development is on creating client value. Highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. How do we continuously provide the valuable software to the clients? It is by building models in what is popularly called iterations or sprints. So what are sprints? Sprints are basically the short term cycles where we would be able to potentially ship a product for the client creating the value and we will employ data value pyramid while building the models. Realize in any agile development activity, the working model is the primary measure of focus. The primary focus is on working models and creating the value for the client in the short term sprints. At the end of the sprint, we seek the feedback for each and every sprint. This way, anything that could potentially go wrong can go wrong to the length of the sprint and not beyond. In that sense, there is always learning from the end of the sprint cycles and there will always be defect prevention as part of the continuous improvement from the quality standpoint. So we build continuous iterations for the client to eventually meet the all the business objective of the client. This is a, the essence of agile data science. In this slide, let us understand various agile business objectives. What are those? Continuous innovation, product adaptability, improved time to market, people and process adaptability, reliable results. Let us understand each one of them in greater detail. And let us look at continuous innovation. We should be able to deliver on the current customer requirements through continuous innovation. This is one critical agile business objective. The others are, is that enough that we are delivering on the current customer requirements via continuous innovation? No, we should be able to cater to the future customer requirements and future customer demand. How do we do that? By being adaptable and agile and scalable. What does this help the client with? By being adaptable, scalable and agile, we will be able to look at improved time to market for our clients. What does it mean? It is one thing to say we will iterate and create the value through iterations, but it's completely different to ball game at the marketplace when the client is trying to compete with the competitors in the marketplace. Your ability to be adaptable and scalable, providing valuable solution which is time bound and optimal would help the client to have the competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis the competitors in the marketplace and could also improve the return on investment for the client. For doing this, we should also be creating people and process adaptability. Why is that required? People and process adaptability are imperative to respond to any demanding needs or demanding challenges at the marketplace. Then the results that we come up and provide to the clients have to be not just reliable, but also have to be robust. Why is this important? The results being reliable are quite important because this will help for the impetus to the business growth and the profitability which are business imperatives. With this, I have come to the end of this video. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like, share the video and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications whenever we release the video. Bye.